shield, this one, and work behind the shield so that you don't get splashed. Or you actually want to actually put on the actual face guard this way so that you don't get splashed. Either one. I will tell you that most times people tend not to want to wear this. They rather work behind the shield and work this way. Either way will be fine. You just want to prevent splashback. So, <clears throat> now we're taking out our tubes. You can actually see your plasma yields at the top. Your serum yields are at the bottom. Alright, and then we had our light blue over here. So again, remember we don't want to pick up and then lay down because the tube is actually going to redistribute if we do it that way. So you actually want to go in to the tube holder with some tweezers or they also call them pickups in the lab so that you can get this because remember this doesn't have a buffy. So any agitation to this is actually going to flip and redistribute the red blood cells of the uh, tube itself. Okay. So we have those. For this lab, you're going to actually have some two-by-twos because you don't want to open the stoppers without something over the stopper top. So that's what you're going to use your two-by-twos for. If you need pickups for your short tubes to get them out, you need your pickups as well. You're also going to need pipettes. Okay, The pipette is to get the blood out of here and get it out of there without destroying the sample. That's the whole reason for these. These are relatively cheap. Okay. You need your transport tubes because this is actually what your plasma sample and your plasma yield is going to go into. And then most labs like for you to use your paraffin wax because this is actually going to seal the tube off so that nothing leaks. Okay. So <clears throat> what we want to do is take a couple of two-by-twos, get our transport tube, our pipette and our cap all behind our acrylic shield. Then we'll take our tube behind the acrylic shield. You actually want to work the tube off the top. You don't want to grab it and pull straight up because you know that's going to cause splash. But you kind of want to work it off gently. Then what you're going to do is take your pipette Come into your sample, pipette as much off as possible, transfer it into your transfer tube. And you can do that all the way down until right before the buffy coat. You can leave a little bit of gel, a little bit of liquid over the gel because you don't want to touch the gel and disturb that. Then what you're going to do is put your top back onto your tube and what you want to make sure that you do is to screw the top all the way back down so that it touches okay so that it will basically look like an undisturbed tube so what you have in the bottom is going to be your buffy coat and then your serum yield or your red blood cells are going to be at the bottom that's going to go to the lab and then now you have your actual plasma yield. You're going to put your cap on it and make sure that you push the cap all the way down. And then what will happen is you will put your label on. Your label should be straight. So no scarves where you wrap it and close it. No candy canes where it swirls around, okay? It needs to be straight up and down because they have barcode readers in the lab. So what they do is they accession this in, just like you scan groceries. Same thing happens in the lab. They take this, put a scanner over it, accession it in, and then it goes through its testing. 
The final step for this is your parafilm. So what you're going to do is you're going to cut your parafilm in one square. Take off the coating. And then you're going to take this, put it on your top, pull it, and then you're going to wrap this around your top. And what it does is it actually creates a seal or a barrier. So even if this gets turned upside down, if there is a small amount of leakage, this is actually going to keep it secure. Okay. So when you label your tube, you still want to be able to label it so that when someone picks it up in the lab, they read from left to right. Okay. So this is your plasma yield for this tube. The reason why I'm telling you to use your pipette is because pipettes are cheap, first of all. The second reason is because people get lazy in the lab because you can actually take a tube and take your top off and then you have people in the lab that because they're lazy and don't want to do the pipette, just pour their sample into the transfer tube. And you can do that. However, if you're one of those techs that are doing that and forget that you may not have a stable barrier in your red top because it really doesn't have a buffy and your blues that get spun don't have a buffy at all, if you're one of those techs that say, oh, I can just take it and pour it off, it's not going to be an issue, it looks really pretty here, but if you take it and turn it over, this is what happens. So now this sample is destroyed. Could you take it and pour it back in here? Yeah, you could. Put the top back on it and drop it back in the centrifuge. do that. But what's going to happen is it's going to reseparate, but now you're going to see that red blood cell distribution in there, which is now a hemolyzed sample, which still can't be used. Okay? So the easiest thing to do is use the pipette. Because people forget that when they get this red top, look what happens. All the red blood cells, because there's no barrier in here. So all of the red blood cells now are destroying the sample. So the best way to transfer is pipette always. Okay, then you don't have those miscommunications or those mishaps that actually happen. Now, we'll let that stop for a second. I have a question. Yes. If you have several tubes to do, that if they're the all the same patient, patient, you can use the same pipette okay. because the plasma is the same. And you wouldn't be doing multiple patients at one time. Right. So if that patient has six tubes, you do all six of that patient's tubes with one pipette, with one pipette and then you move on to your next patient. But does that mean the, sa the, um, the transfer is the same? Or do you have to get a transfer per you tube? You have to get a transfer per tube because remember all of the tubes are different tests. So that is a good question. Yes. If your lab is asking for six SST tests, they're expecting six SSTs. Okay, so if, they, if you print out six labels, they expect six tubes. So, now look at it. Yeah. Now it's hemolyzed, so now it can't be used anyway because the red blood cells are now in your actual plasma yield and it's destroyed. So, the best thing to do is to use the pipette because now this is a redraw. The lab's not going to use this. It's going to get tossed. Patient has to be called back in. Okay. Any questions? Okay, so again, the tubes that are going to get spun, SSTs, which are your goals and your tiger tops, your red tops, PSTs, your bumblebee, your RST, which is your orange top, and then your light blue is going to get spun. Okay, any questions? Spin time, 
15 minutes. Clot time can take anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes. You do not want to put the tubes in the centrifuge until they have clotted completely. Okay? Awesome.